Welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is none other than Paymon Tai, a longtime serial entrepreneur and founder of Visme, a startup that allows anyone to create and communicate data visually with no design experience. Today, Paymon and I discuss his various entrepreneurial ventures and experiences that led to starting Visme, how and why Visme chose to use a dot co versus a dot com as well as the impact of building a dot co digital presence so with that paymon welcome and thank you for making time to join us today thank you my pleasure alvin certainly so to kick things off paymon briefly share with the listeners a bit about yourself who you are and what you do all right so um i'm the founder of is me and um I started back all the way in terms of my entrepreneurship uh, back in 2001 uh, to pay with my way through school. I ended up designing websites and that uh, soon after I ended up, you know, as soon as I was getting my bachelor's, I turned it into a small little agency designing websites for various companies over the years, uh, which still to this day, it kind of runs, um, you know, on the side now is uh, done hundreds of websites and uh, grew to about, you know, 10, 11 people at, at one point. Um, and now, uh, it, it, you know, the, the main um, focus for me is VizMe, which, uh, you know, kind of spun out and incubated out of um, hindsight. And it was somewhat by accident, somewhat by, you know, seeing and observing uh, what, you know, needs other people have. And, um, and so, it's kind of interesting because of the way that it's been evolving based on a little bit differently than my um, agency side and agency side, you're kind of bound by your client needs. So you kind of have to do what they want, even though you can guide them in the right direction. At the end of the day, they make the decisions on business side as a service. Uh, so it's a software as a service. So you're dealing with a much larger number of users and therefore you have to make decisions that you think is going to be best for the masses. It's not just for one person or one client. So totally different type of scenario. Scaling is different. Uh, servicing is different. The industry is different. So it's pretty exciting, um, but also a little bit more hectic. So now you mentioned hindsight. So is that a, is that a company or one, yeah. one of your companies? Yeah, yeah. So that's my other company. And that's how, I mean, you know, without hindsight, Visme would have never started because, you know, I use some of the initial resources from that uh, to, to begin uh, what has become Visme now, which is now its own separate company. Uh, so we're talking about, you know, having a agency um, and also now the SaaS business, which is Visme. Gotcha. So then in terms of hindsight, so is hindsight more of like a business to business or business to consumer? Probably more so business to business would be my yeah, guess. B2B. Yeah, pretty much strictly B2B. There's no consumer side to it. Um, right. Or from small businesses or sometimes larger companies. Right. Whereas Visme, though, is I guess that's B to B to E, meaning everyone or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, very. Um, you know, I guess the you know people always ask who is your user persona who uses Visme, and my um, you know answer to them is that just think about uh, if you uh, whoever has ever wanted to create a PowerPoint or a graphic in any way from social to their website to you know a report any of those things if you ever created something that had some sort of a visual means to it or data related to it such as a chart or graph um, that's the audience for Visme. So as you can imagine. Um, it runs the gamut from, uh, you know, the student and educator side to the SMBs um, and all the way down to the enterprise and large companies and all from all walks of life. And it could be a salesperson. It could be a marketing person. It could be the CEO. It could be a teacher. It could be educator. So it's, it's very actually difficult because you have such a wide range of users. So how do you kind of speak their language? And so we have to find a common ground um, at, and at times create niche, you know, campaigns and targeting to be able to, um, you know, appeal to them. Gotcha. So in terms of, so in terms of, I guess, creating the visual stories then, so you really help, I guess, the non-designer truly become an effective designer in a nutshell. Um, yes, that, that is correct. So, um, it, you know, although there are designers that use Visme and although there are, uh, you know, uh, individuals that have, you know, prior uh, graphic design or uh, in other cases, technical experience, 
um, just as much, if not more, are individuals that are just very new to this game. So, you know, infographics, um, you know, is getting the word is getting more popular, but um, we also call them tall form presentations. So it's like a presentation stacked on top of each other. So blocks or slides on top of each other. So you just scroll down and view it and read it. Um, and that is something that's kind of more and more popular where sometimes people uh, for different um, types of communication they use and create their um, uh, uh, information as an infographic versus let's say slide presentation. Uh, and so most people have never created an infographic, so it might be the first time. And those also come and use with me uh, to do that. So they would have no experience and work on the first stop shop. Gotcha. Gotcha. So then you, you're effectively, I guess if we put a broad stroke on it, it's really that you're helping people to tell their stories in a visual manner then. Absolutely. You know, I, gotcha. I use the statement, if you want to create a very long, boring report or proposal that is, you know, extremely text heavy and tens of pages long, by all means, don't ever bother using Visme. Uh, we're not made for that. <laughs> use you know Microsoft Word. But if you want to create something that you're going to use more visuals, a combination of icons, graphics, text as well, uh, charts, graphs, you know different elements, icons, to um, you know even sometimes with video and audio, um, you know we are we allow you to combine those things into uh, you know a way to tell your stories in a more visual. Uh, meaning uh, matter. And basically the other part is that, you know, over 65% of the population are visual learners. They learn things if they look at them. I'm one of them, you know, and most people are one of them. Uh, and so you might uh, learn that way or, or absorb information that way. That's what we humans are, right? I mean, our language started as uh, glyphs, um, you know, hieroglyphics and so on. Uh, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of years ago. And that's what we're made of. And therefore, we're kind of just going back to a means of, uh, you know, being able to communicate and, uh, you know, translate things to each other in a more visual manner. The problem, of course, these days is that, you know, people don't have the time. It's much easier just to sit down and just type something real quickly. Um, and so we're trying to open this area where there are um, sometimes a lot of information could be presented in a smaller or the visual element could be a supplement to the content that you're writing. Maybe you're writing a very long blog post and you could just uh, repurpose a piece of that into um, a graphic or a chart or a pie and people when they're reading that and also see that chart or that graphic, they'll have a much easier understanding or um, you know, capturing that information. So that's what you know, uh, Bizme is striving on to do. Gotcha. So then let, rewinding the clock a bit then. So you're working at hindsight, you get this idea uh, to create um, this software that would help tell, um, you know, folk stories and with engaging uh, presentations, infographics, other visual content. So like you have the idea, you have the idea, but then how did you come about with the name Visme? Like, where did that come from? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a long, uh, you know, discussion and so on. Initially it wasn't called Visme, it, it was called, um, presenter, um, you know, and that's what it initially was, but we wanted to come up with a name that is short and sweet, it's unique, it's different. And uh, we went through a lot of names. I mean, it took six months to really decide and come up with that, uh, name. So it wasn't an easy thing. Although sometimes a lot of times, you know, people come up with names and just, you know, smack it on top of their business. That's great to get started. But at some point, you know, you want to you want to find something that you think is identifies with you. And so uh, amongst many names, which I can't remember, probably most of them now, um, you know, it was voting different people and colleagues and the family, you know, telling them which name sticks or like more. So uh, that's how we settle on the name business. So did in, in going through that process now and obviously landing at Visme. So was there any sort of, uh, I guess, method to the madness in terms of going, oh, hey, this domain has the I mean, this name has these domains that are available or, you know, any sort of. Um, uh, yeah, we, that, was, that was one part of it. But in, in case of Visme, the dot com was taken and we felt so um, strongly about uh, that name that we said, OK, we're going to do we're going to go with it. And maybe one day we can get the dot com. 
Um, and so we did eventually buy the dot com. Although, you know, if you go to the dot com, bizme.com, it will redirect you to bizme.co. Um, it actually is our domain. We own that. We, we bought that at some point uh, when it became available. Gotcha. So then why, why uh, .co out of all the, I mean, out of all the other extensions like .net, .org? Yeah, I mean, .org, you know, we're not an organization. Uh, .co, at least, you know, four or five years ago was kind of after the .com, the more popular one. I mean, these days you have .io. Every company has a SaaS. They can't get a .com. They do a .io or .ai, you know, if they have any kind of, a, you know, the... Um, as far as you know technical side of things and um that's another part you know app dot app is another one uh so there's different uh sides of it but you know for us you know, it was two letters so shorter sweeter we went with it and the dot net is not longer as as popular as it was although we pretty much bought every extension uh we decided to keep the dot co and just redirect some of the other ones. Gotcha. Yeah. And I was going to ask, did, you know, did you all uh, purchase other extensions at the same time that you purchased the, the .co? Yeah, 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 we did that. And over time, any others came available, we grabbed them. Gotcha. So, so you do, I guess, have visme.app then? Uh, we have that as well. I don't know if it's, uh, it's probably not redirecting or it might be, I don't know, but we do <laughs> Gotcha. Are there any other, I guess, new domain extensions that that you've also purchased, or, or you just pretty much stop there with uh, .app? Uh, if something becomes available, we'll grab it. Um, I think we bought a couple more. I can't remember which ones. Uh, perhaps it was a .io. I'm not sure, but we bought those as well. Right. And so, obviously, you know, knowing that that visme uh, .co or .co, so. Mm -hmm. You know, did you ever think about, hey, people could, I guess, interpret that or interpret the domain as, um, hey, maybe they're missing an M at the end of there. That should be .com. Like, did that ever cross your mind? Or uh, no? Well, we know that uh, people used to go to the .com and end up on uh, some other site that, again, you know, we could not purchase a domain at that time. Eventually, they closed down and they put up their domain. You know, we you know, decided to buy it and came to an right. agreement after some time. Um, so how much time passed then from the time that you purchased the .co and launched until the time? Two and a half years. Oh, yeah. about two it years. Was, uh, so oh, were yeah. you in, in touch with that person in between that time? Um, off and on a couple of times. Yeah, initially the, the statement was, you know, this, this will never be for sale. And um, we felt that, you know, it's a matter of time. So, uh, and later on, we were contacted. We didn't contact him. So, Wait it out. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Good things come to those who wait then. Interesting. And so that person reached out. Um, now, were they operating a business on that, on the dot com? Or was it just that they were, I guess, just just holding? No, it, was, it was some sort of a business. I can't recall exactly what it was, but it was very small. I think it was a one man shop. Um, uh, yeah, that, that closed down eventually. So has, has or will Visme ever think about rebranding from the dot CO to the dot com? Or is that? You know, it's kind of like it's just all it is is our domain extension, right? I mean, people go to Google, they just type in Visme and they don't care what it says after that. And that's what comes up. We come up at the top. So it's really the domain is more and more relevant when you just type it on Google or search bar our name and it will automatically take you to the site. Right. And, and it's lucky because, you know, one, you have a uh, you have a unique brandable name. Um, and so there aren't likely that many other Vizmies out there that are doing what you do. Uh, yeah, that's great. Gotcha. And so, um, you know, then just kind of moving forward, then, you know, where do you see, you know, Vizme building to from where it is today? Uh, we just want to make it the, you know, the number one visual communication tool. Number one doesn't necessarily mean you know, the largest or the most amount of users, um, it really for us means it's the absolute, you know, when you use any other product and you come and use our service, you, you know, hands down say, these guys have it down and it allows me to do everything that I can do and more. Um, so that's what our focus and goal is, you know, and, um, you know, we've gone from, you know, a tool that was, you know, not many people knew as an infographic. And, you know, now a lot of people hear about it or they find us in search or other places or a lot of referrals, a lot of traffic come from just, you know, somebody else using it and telling them about it. Or sometimes they're using multiple tools and then they try ours and maybe they'll like ours more. And that tends to be the case more and more. We just want to, uh, you know, uh, a great tool. That's, 
the way we go about it and everything else will work its way out. <laughs> Definitely. So then, you know, if you had to do it all over again, knowing everything that you you know in terms of your background, your experience, uh, especially with the journey of Visme so, such far or thus far, you know, would you do anything different than what you've done? Uh, you always do something different when you look back in hindsight, you know? <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, sure. There's many, many things that we do different. I couldn't pinpoint to one or two things. There would be, you know, a number of things that I would probably have done it, but it's more of small things. It's not about major decisions. You know, we wish we had done that and so on, but, uh, you know, it's always a learning experience, you know, not just as an entrepreneur, but when you're working a product and you get deeper and deeper into it, you realize you want to do things different. You know, Hey, maybe we should have, um, looking back, we would have created this feature to function a little bit differently. Looking back, we would have, um, you know, added more templates uh, in this specific uh, area because more people wanted them earlier. We would have, you know, waited out on launching a certain, you know, functionality a little bit later on or focused more on this area. So it's, you see, there's a lot of, lot of little things. Right. Uh, but there isn't any particular huge regrets or anything that I would say that would have been a destructive force, you know, that we should have completely done different. Um, so, um, you know, in, in hindsight, yes, you'll always look back and wish that because hindsight's 22, right? Uh, but in, so we, we're more forward thinking, right? So um, as long as we learn from something and, uh, as a mistake or as something we could have done differently, we look at it as far as what can we do in the future to avoid, minimize, or, um, you know, allow us to take a step forward. Gotcha. Now, would you ever have considered, you know, going with uh, probably a more descriptive name, um, you know, whether it be like storypresenter.com or something along those lines? No, let me put it this way, you know, and I'll say this pretty straightforward. The, the name and the domain, they don't, it's, it's like we're so past that. It's all about the product right now. So, yeah. And I think people focus way too much on um, the domain name has been a dot com or dot org or dot net and so on as if it's going to make or break their business. Yeah, sure. I, you know, there's certain extensions, you know, I, I wouldn't go with, like we wouldn't be a visme.org unless we were a nonprofit organization or an organization, right? Maybe one day we'll launch one, we, you know, but, uh, you know, the, there's so many other aspects to running a successful, uh, business operation website and so on that the name just becomes a, you know, a past tense. I mean, you know, godaddy.com. I mean, it's like, you know, you could have spent, you know, two hours asking someone, why the heck did you come up with this? It makes no sense. It's stupid and so on. But that's what they settled in and just move forward, you know, full pace. And, and that's how we look at it as a, as a name or, you know, those things are just, um, um, they're, you know, they're past tense, you know, you, you make that decision and now you move on to, to the other bigger things. Definitely. And then in terms of so so how did you, I guess, gain visibility with that company? Because I mean, obviously, like you said, it's it's more about the company, it's more about the product. But there are likely some good products that never make it to see the light of day. Um, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been over five years since we launched the product to the public, starting with just about 700 or so 730, you know, signed up users for beta. And that was back in 2013. And very slowly it started, you know, where, you know, user at a time came in um, and mentioned in a blog, outreaching various, you know, people in presentation or infographic or visual communication, you know, industry and so on and saying, hey, we've got this tool and just want to take a look at it and see what you think. You know, it's just literally, it's almost like starting a mom and pop shop and knocking on people's doors one by one, walking away just to get, you know, little bits and pieces of, um, you know, recognition or uh, notice or, you know, word of mouth. That's how it was at the beginning. And you do that for so long. Um, and assuming that your product is, you know, good. I mean, our product pretty much sucked at the very beginning. I'll, I'll say it up front. You know, I look back and I laugh at what <laughs> five years ago. Um, and in a way, I'm so glad. I mean, I was actually disappointed when we first launched it that, oh man, you know, we just, you know, launched 700 users a month, two months later, traffic's not going up. Um, we didn't have a paid version yet. Paid version was a year later because I knew that nobody's going to pay for it initially. You just got to, you know, get feedback and improve the product. Uh, why would you even want to have a paid plan when you're, you know your product is, you know, not heavily used by others? Um, so that was like a year later. Um, but in the meanwhile, 
yeah, it's kind of disappointing. And then as any startup is that, um, hey, this is not going fast enough. We're not growing fast enough. And um, people are actually, some people are complaining. They're like, oh, this other tool is better and you're missing this feature and that feature. I mean, those are all part of that, uh, you know, struggle. I mean, startup is a freaking struggle. It is tough, man. I mean, it is not easy. I don't care who says it, um, you know, that everybody says they're killing it. No, not everybody's killing it. Um, right. So that's a model on the outside of using it, you know, three months later, half of them are gone or out of business. How, how did that happen? Because they were killing it? No, they weren't. Uh, so it's a very small uh, portion that make that. But, you know, our thing has been just very consistency, um, you know, consistently, uh, you know, make you know, improving and outreaching. And then also we create a lot of great educational information. I have a very popular blog that um, blog.vizme.code, we write about quality content, about visual communication, about presentations, about different design principles, things that have to do that our potential audience could, could consume. And we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort writing those pieces and all the graphics that goes behind them. Um, and uh, so little by little, over the matter of years, um, those have gain recognition, they've got a placement on Google and other people share them and do that. It's been organic growth. There isn't been, as opposed to some, you know, a small number of startups that may come, you know, just blowing out of the left. And then next thing you know, they're the next Uber and the next, you know, PayPal and um, your next, uh, you know, Slack and so on. I mean, those stories do happen. Uh, but for the most and majority of companies, uh, it is, uh, as you know, a progressive, small progress. And as long as you know, you're moving forward each, you know, quarter or each six months or a year, you look back and you see that things have improved and you're heading higher and you continue to, um, adhere to your audience and take care of their needs and speak their language. Um, then, you know, the things will start to happen little by little. And that's awesome because, and I love to, you know, I go back to the comment about the domain name not mattering and I go, you know, what's interesting is it's likely it doesn't matter, but that's because one, you worked at your product, you got it good, but then two, you're also educating via content marketing. And so it's almost kind of like you're eating your do own dog food and using the, the service to present yourself. Yeah, that's, that's correct as well. Wow, interesting. And so, and, and I go, and that to me, it's those two things, especially knowing that, you know, we live in an online world. Uh, and most people, like you said, they're either going to come across you one or two ways, either because someone shares it with them, or, you know, they're, they're searching for a specific topic online and run across likely one of your blog posts. Um, I mean, now obviously, you probably do paid marketing uh, and advertising. Mm -hmm. We do very wow. little paid marketing. We do very little advertising. Uh, wow. We wow. Do so that, but it's very little. Um, and it's just, you know, it's. So this is all it, organic. Uh, yeah, it, it's organic. I mean, uh, paid advertising typically is it, it will work as long as for most cases, it will work as long as you keep spending on it. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, you can use it, to, uh, you know, to, um, you know, certain areas you know, it can work, um, you know, hey, there's no way we, you know, it's going to take us a long time to get recognition in this field or that field or to be able to even place on Google for some of these keywords, you know, you can target some of those, but no, it's been pretty much um, organic traffic and it's been expensive. It's not, you know, it's not free. Um, it's a lot of labor. It's a lot of work, but the advantage of, um, you know, uh, content marketing, which is now like everybody does it, right? So it's actually gotten pretty flooded and it's, um, you know, you really have to stand out. And it took us a few years to even figure out how we're going to stand out over to others. Right. And it ended up being quality over uh, quantity. That's what works for us. Um, and that's, you know, the advantage of it is, you know, we might spend tens of hours on just one article, writing, research, graphics, everything. A lot goes into it. And it's, you know, and we never know it's a guarantee that one piece is going to take off. Right. And maybe one out of a few, uh, you know, will, um, you know, get really recognition, a lot of shares, a lot of traffic. But what happens often, though, is um, a lot of those great pieces over time, they become evergreen content. They don't really die out. I mean, if you write about like 19 design mistakes and non-designers make, 
or you know, 12 visual hierarchy principles. These things will never get old. Five years from now, you can look back, that article will look as fresh as it did, um, at, at did years ago. Those principles don't change. And so uh, the advantage is that they continue to bring some sort of a traffic or you know, share or uh, recognition over time, and that's when it pays off. It's like a dividend, right? So it's like you, you invest in some sort of a stock, and it's not sexy, nobody, you know, it's not gonna take off right away, but you know, you bought the Coca-Cola and it gives you the three and a half percent or whatever dividend year after year after year after year. Well, 10 years from now, it's gonna be worth something, right? So it's a similar thing with content marketing is you don't go out and that's what our thing was. We did something and it didn't take off. Huh? How come we only got X amount of shares? How come we only got this money visits after like four weeks, five weeks, we just spend, 45 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours on this piece is so disappointing. It's not that one piece. You know, you, it's a combination of things and it takes a long time. Um, and also, you know, we may write certain pieces. We spend a lot of time getting out there and finding the right audience and just trying to get that content in front of them. Um, you know, reaching out to someone that wrote a similar article and saying, hey, what do you think of this? So there's a whole piece to it. It's, uh, you know, but it's the consistency uh, of doing that and also the quality of content that you write that sets you apart within your industry against someone else. Yeah, because funny enough, I think that's how we got in contact. I believe I had got in touch, or one of your employees may have reached out to me. I think it was Grace or something like that that had reached out via email. So that's how we uh, originally got connected. Yeah, that's that could, could have been maybe, you know, I mentioned for taking a look at our tool or it could have right. been. Yeah, so um, that's, I'm not surprised. I mean, you know, that's something uh, we do. And as you see, we're here talking right now. Right, yeah, I, I go, it worked, <laughs> it worked. So then in terms of the the actual software, so, I mean, help me understand or help the listeners understand, I mean, how do we go about getting started? What are the plans? What's pricing? Yeah, so, um, you know, we are a freemium model. That means you go in and you sign up free. Uh, no questions asked, just put your name, email, and then you'll have a free account for as long as you want to use this. Um, and um, the free version, you know, has certain features locked out. So it is a limited version, but it allows you to get an experience as far as what this tool can do. You get a gauge of, you know, the se selection of templates. You can actually create something, you can publish it, you can share it online. Um, then there is, you know, certain features like unlocking all the icons and all the graphics and all the templates and, um, you know, being able to download it as a few other formats and be able to pass or protect your content and make it private. Those kind of things come with the premium version. So if you ever decide to that you need those at any time, you can upgrade. And that's where we actually generate the revenue. It comes from people deciding or certain percentage of companies or businesses or individuals deciding that, yeah, I'm actually willing to pay for this. And this is going to, you know, this makes sense for me. Um, and, uh, that's the, the model. So, um, it, we cut, we have paid plans and we have the free users who can use it as long as they want. And that's across, I guess, individuals, businesses. Correct. So, um, it, for everybody and then for, it's the same plan for everyone, the free one. And we have business plans when you want to pay. Um, and then we have, uh, nonprofit discounts which basically is the business plan with a discount and then we have the education uh, plan which basically is a is a lower plan of our premium um it has most features not all and uh, it's fit really for education so we have a uh, plan for students as low as 30 dollars a semester and we have one that's called the, the uh, educator discount that has a little bit more features. And that one is uh, $60 uh, per semester. So it's a fraction of what you would pay if you had a business plan, which is a few times of that. But, uh, so you, so then you cover both student and teacher then? Uh, yeah, yeah. We have a student plan with a teacher. And again, a student could sign up for the teacher and vice versa. It's just that, you know, usually most students appeal to the lower costs. Gotcha, gotcha. Well... As we wrap up here, I mean, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the listeners? Um, no, I think that's about it. I mean, if you you know have an interest in terms of um, learning more about design and about uh, you know the understanding the principles of how you can communicate more effectively, present more efficiently, um, you know how to talk to your audience uh, in any of those areas, uh, we have an absolutely free blog. 
Um, of course, most blogs are free and so is ours. And you just go to blog.bizme.co and there's plenty of information there and uh, you can read about it. And of course, if you decide you want to give the tool a, a try, you just go to www.bizme.co or .com and you'll end up on our website. Gotcha. Now, if anyone wants to get in contact with you, how might they do so? Uh, they can just look up my name on LinkedIn. Um, and so it's Payman, P-A-Y-M-A-N. Last name is Tai, T as in Tom, A-E-I. And they can just go there and uh, send a request to get in touch with me. Well, all right. Well, that's it. We're out of time. So Paymon, man, thank you again for joining us today and sharing your entrepreneurial journey. And we wish you and VizMe much success. Thank you very much. All right. And thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the weekly newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.